Boston friends. How are you? I missed you. Thanks for coming back. If we haven't met yet, my name is Daylene and this is my channel where I talk about cross stitch and sewing and quilting and my grandbabies and food and of course what I'm grateful for. Thanks a lot for stopping by today. Ooh, today is Friday. Yay! Friday, June 19th. And I have treats. Of course I do. I have cookies. Look at these. Ooh, you're gonna love them. They're called sprinkle refrigerator cookies. Okay, so uh, let's see. About seven years ago, I had to change my way of eating and my diet and all the foods and give up lots of sugar and gluten and dairy and blah, blah, blah. And um, because I did, Mr. Wright did. So once in a while, I like to make him some cookies that are just for him. So um, they're refrigerator cookies. I make the batch and then I put them in wax paper and I make it into a log. Can you see that? And then I just write uh, what the name is and the temperature at 375 for eight minutes. And so you just take one of these out of the freezer and then you slice them up and instantly you have a, a bunch of cookies to give to your neighbors or your husband or anyway um they're called sprinkle cookies they take three fourths of a cup of sprinkles so you put that in the dough and i used uh red white and blue but you can use any holiday any color any kind that you want even if you have a little bit of leftover sprinkles put them in there so you need lots of them but um it's a re they're really delicious he says they're good i i did take a little a, a little piece it was delicious it was delicious so these are traditional cookies with butter and sugar and you know all the good stuff and anyway super easy to make i think your family will love them and then um maybe a couple weeks from now when you don't really feel like uh getting in the kitchen and doing some stuff you can uh take one out of the freezer and slice it up and have fresh cookies for di for dinner so or picnic that would be good that'd be real good um, oh, the quilt, the quilt behind me. Okay, the quilt behind me is called an Argyle quilt. Let's see. Oh, there you go. There you go. And it is uh, machine pieced. And then machine, I sewed the Rick Rack on by machine. And then I hand quilted the whole thing, which was a knotted mess because I was so frustrated getting my thread stuck on the Rick Rack. So if you do it, you might want to sew the Rick Rack on last. Um, I made it in 1989. Wow, look at that lipstick. That's, it's called You Read My Mind, and it looks like I'm, you know, channeling Elena B. <laughs> it's like, wow! <laughs> oh, well, okay, 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 sorry, sorry. You're looking at yourself in the camera. Uh, let's do some housekeeping first. Uh, first of all, I had one question about the Tums that I talked about last time for their tomatoes. And I just put one crushed up around each of my tomato plants uh, about once a month. That's all. So it's, uh, you got to do a little more than just um, once a season, but uh, once a month's not too bad of, not, not too bad of a deal. Uh, thank you very much for your prayers and well wishes for my friend Donna Ray and my friend Stacy. And um, really, I, I think I think they helped. Um, they're feeling a little bit better. Um, they could always use extra. So if you have any extra prayers, please keep them in your prayers. But um, I appreciate you um, coming to the call and, and helping out and leaving some messages for them. So thank you very much. It's it's a great community. Great, great, great community. Um, okay, I, before I go on, I want to talk about the comments. Um, first of all, um, I had a little dip in my, uh, my pep in my step a couple days ago, and so I went to read my comments, and they were gone. Uh, you guys leave the greatest, not guys, guys and girls, leave the greatest comments. They're so kind, and if you're just feeling a little bit, just a little dip in your enthusiasm. You have the most wonderful, kind things to say. So I went back to read a couple, kind of perk me up, have a cup of coffee, read some good things, and I couldn't find the comments. And then I found a lot of comments in the junk file, and then some said I didn't answer. So please, please know I read every single comment. I put a little like or a little heart. I thought I answered every single comment. I may not have. Please forgive me. We're just going to draw a big, fat, stinky, sharpie line across and start fresh. I don't really know what happened with the comments. So, anyway. Okay, so let's talk about some previous finishes. Ooh, that'll be good. That'll be good. All right. This one. This one. 
Oh, there you go. Is by Bent Creek. I did it in 2002. It's a good one. I like this one. I like the colors. I like everything. I like the swirly bits about it. It's a good one, but that's all it really says. So that was before I was uh, keeping track of what, what everything was. Like this one. This one has no information whatsoever. I don't know the name of it. I don't know. Um, I do not know what the com what the count wait a minute i might know i don't know <laughs> i don't know what the count is i don't i don't know when i stitched it it hangs on my sampler wall so it says america in god we trust our country our destiny wow that sounds so i don't know sincere and stern and uh, i loved it i don't i don't know when i stitched it so all right there you go Okay, let's see. You want to see some fully finished things? I got a couple things. Okay, first of all, look at this. I finished making some orange aid kraut. Yeah, it's sauerkraut that you add an apple. Um, you know, you shred it when you do your crap cabbage and then you uh, slice an orange. And so you can layer it or you can just line it up on the sides of the jar. And then um, you got to let it uh, percolate for uh, five or six days and then you put your fridge and it'll stay for nine months ten months and um, I'm not a super huge fan of sauerkraut but um, I take a fork full a day and I put it with whatever I'm eating or I just eat the fork full and it's really good for good bacteria or I hate that word gut bacteria get, get. anyway it's really good for you um so yep i made my jars of sauerkraut and uh, marlene stitching by the lake she was making sauerkraut so we traded some recipes so i thought you might like to see it it's beautiful it's really beautiful um the next one i'm gonna make is a, a blueberry kraut so anyway this this week's was the apple orange it's called orange jade kraut and uh i promise i'll link the recipe below and I think, I think you'll like it. It's got a great um, citrus uh, flavor to it. So kind of cuts that weird sauerkraut. Unless you love sauerkraut, then that's a good thing. Okay. Uh, I got this next thing out of the book, Ooh La La by Blackbird Designs. And I made the little sewing bag and I finished it. I used some fabric on the back that had uh, red and green color. Um... I'm, it's it's fully lined. I use the same fabric, fully lined. And in their picture, the ribbon that they used was a little bit darker and longer. It said um, a yard and a third, and I only had a yard. So mine's kind of smaller. It has a little bit... It's the best I could do. I, I couldn't go to any stores. So anyway, turned out really cute. I really like it. It was super easy. The directions were really, really clear and easy to follow. Uh, maybe like a half hour. Just sit down, follow the directions, cut out your piece of scrap fabric that you have and um, instantly have a little sewing bag. So I like it so much. I think I might be making an extra one so that both my little grand girlies could have a, a little sewing bag and then I could fill it with little sewing notions and they could have their own bag. So it, it's really substantial. I like it. You, you use interfacing behind your stitching so it kind of gives it a little more oomph. And it's a really, really pretty pattern. Look, it's in there. Oh, oh, you know what's in here? Oh, hi, Brenda. Somebody, one of my subscribers, look, she sent me this really pretty spoon and tea infuser. Look at that heart tea infuser. I was keeping it in there so I didn't use it <laughs> before I said thank you. I sent a thank you note, but I didn't want to use it until I showed everybody. Anyway, that's a good one. That is a good one. I think you'll like it. It stitched up super quick and you can use scrap fabric because it's not very big and then just any fabric that you have and apparently any ribbon that you have. So, hey, times are, times are tricky. You got to use what you have. Okay, look it. She's finished. She's finished and she's fully framed. I know. You want to talk about it? <laughs> okay, first of all, I used my husband's initials. He never gets his initials and things. So I used his initials on the front of this. Uh, this is a Blackbird design piece called America the Beautiful. This happens to be out of print. 
and um, a fellow cross-stitcher let me borrow her pattern, which was so generous of her. I really appreciated it. I love this pattern. This was my unicorn pattern, and I just, mm, it's a good one. Oh, and I left off the outside. There was a little zigzaggy border around the outside, and I left it off because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to finish it. Okay, so I finished it, and there's no stores open to go to framing where I live. So I went to my closet one day, and I happened to find this frame. I had bought it for, I bought it about six months ago, maybe a year ago, and I bought it for a piece I was going to do for our um, uh, our dog that had passed away. And because I wanted a little bit of red in it, she was a red golden retriever, and um, when I started stitching the piece, it, this wasn't the frame for that. But I found it in my closet, and look, it's got a little bit of red. It has a little bit of gold, and it just set that it was the perfect size. It just set this piece off perfectly. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Okay, so let's talk about it. Let's. Um, I finished it with. I just use. I just use dollar store wrapping paper it's you know uh paper just brown craft paper this one happens to be polka dot um okay so beforehand oh let me show you this okay when you put i lace my piece um then you drop it in then you use this point driver you can buy this at hobby lobby i think but i can't it's not open right now so if and when that ever opens or maybe online i don't know i'll look it up on amazon see if there's something there maybe we can show that but anyway okay so you just hold it in you hold it like flat and it just shoots those little um point glaze those glazer points or whatever those are in there to hold the piece in i think this was like forty dollars and i've used it several times and it works really easy okay so you do that all the way around and then i put this piece of uh, paper on top of it i just put a little bit of aliens glue around and use my finger to smoosh it and then, um, oh, and then I wet my hands and I wiped all the paper with water on my hands. And then after, you can use a hairdryer, but, you know, overnight or whatever, it hardens. So, I mean, it shrinks a little bit. So it's like tight as a drum. And then I put these, I, well, I put a little sticker on here to tell us who it is, what, what the pattern is, who the designer and um, the, the thread, uh, the little linen I used and whatnot. But then right here, you can see these little dots. Maybe if I turn it this way, you can see. It's, they're just like little little dots. Um, they're kind of thick. You can use uh, pieces of felt, but I put one at the bottom of each one of these. And so when it's hanging on your wall, it, it touches the wall. And so the picture is just a little bit removed from the wall. Um, have you ever gone to a, a tour of a, an older home? Um, and then when you're looking at the wall, you can see where they took pictures down because behind a particular picture, which was smack up against the wall, um, there's a little bit of mold or mildew, you know, from a hundred year old house. And what had happened was no air was circulating behind the picture. So if you put those little dots on the back or a piece of felt, um, that stops that from happening so that it doesn't ruin your walls and, and, uh, we get the air circulating behind there. So anyway, I wanted to show you, I'm so happy it's done. Yay. Yay. That's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Okay. Shall we talk about some, uh, the winners for the drawing? <laughs> it just went, it went wild. <laughs> okay. Look at all these project bags. Okay. Let's see. Number one, this one, no, this one's number one. I, let, let's talk about the picnic one. Okay, this was a um, project bag that I made, put a little thing of tea in there. Doreen Deskins. She said she uses layered Greek dip for her picnics. <laughs> Congratulations, Doreen. Um, if all of the people that I um, mentioned, could you please uh, leave leave me, I'll put my, uh, uh, my email address down below and just, just shoot me a quick email. Let me know your address so that I can mail this off to you. Well, Mr. Wright will mail it off to you. I'll get it all in the packages and he'll take it to the post office um, on Monday. I mean, if you give me your address, then I'll send it out by Monday. Um, anyway, oh, thank you so much for all your comments. I got so many great ideas for for picnic food. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, and Jenny from Long Dog Sampler Stitcher, she left a recipe for all of us. Okay, so just go go click through all those comments and find out all those delicious recipes and or, or her recipe and uh, some ideas for picnics. And I just wrote down all these picnic ideas. Our picnics just kind of got elevated. So thanks a lot for uh, leaving some suggestions. So congratulations, Doreen. Okay, what do we have next? Um, oh, this was the garden one. Look at this one. Deborah Butler. Oh, she said to plant marigolds around to keep pests away. I got a whole bunch of marigolds in the middle of my spinach and Swiss chard. So, yay. Oh, thanks, Deborah. What is wrong with my mind? Deborah, thank you so much for leaving your comment and... Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the, the great garden tips. Well, I got another one for you today, too. So hang in there. Um, let's see. This one was the berry one. Oh, okay. Elisa Reagan. And she said she likes strawberry with balsamic vinegar glaze over top of it. So I have this project bag. I put this berry... Uh, cross stitch a berry bowl sampler cross stitch pattern in that was donated by Beth Twist, um, which was really generous of her. Really generous. So, congratulations, Alisa. Okay, and then I had this. <laughs> so many of you celebrate half birthdays. That's really neat. I was really happy to hear that. Um, and then a couple people didn't even know what it was. So, this person, Ellen McLeese. She didn't even, she didn't know when a half birthday was. So I'm hoping that she'll be celebrating a half birthday this time. Yay. Pick out a cute outfit, buy a new party dress, get ready. <laughs> it's a perfect reason to have cake. It's, and it's funny when you do half a cake. It's hilarious. Okay. And, oh, the other person. A uh, little tiny project bag I made. Person's name is Judy Gibbons, and she said that she would be glad to trade a piece of 40 count fabric for 32 count fabric for me. So, thanks, Judy, and I will pop this in the mail to you if you leave me your address. So, thanks. That was good. That was really good. I loved it. Ooh, I have one. I think I might do another drawing. Okay, wait. I'll talk about something else, and then we'll do another drawing. That'll be good. <laughs> Let's talk about a couple new floss tube folks. Well, not, one's new to me and one uh, took a little bit of a break, but she came back. Okay, so Holly, the forensic flosser, uh, she's done uh, three or four uh, videos or maybe more. I don't know. She's really kind and smart and sweet and... Um, Ooh, you're gonna you're gonna love seeing her cross stitch. Ooh, she does some really really beautiful things, and uh, she has a really pretty smile, and she's just just a, a just a sweetheart. Okay, but one thing I was hoping I'll link her below, and I'll link the other floss tuber below. I was hoping that you would go over to Holly's uh, floss tube channel and leave her a little message. Miss Holly is expecting a baby. Yay! And she's a little bit down about it. She can't, she can't be with her friends. She can't celebrate. She can't be with her family. So I thought we could be her family. We could go over there, write a little message, say congratulations, and we're, the, we're in her corner. We could be her cheerleaders. So if you get a minute, go and uh, celebrate Holly and listen to her floss tube. You'll enjoy it. You get kind of a do for one. Okay, uh, the other floss tube maker that's new to me, her name's Robin at My Life's A Stitch. And, oh, real kind spirit, beautiful stitching, lots of blackbirds, uh, samplers. Oh, she had lots of hauls. She wasn't feeling tip top, so she was uh, spending some money and buying some good things so while she was uh, recuperating. So uh, she shared all that. But, um, oh, she has a real good spirit. Uh, kids and a husband and, you know, the whole thing. And so uh, stitching is kind of her relaxation. So I just thought, ooh, she's a good one. You're going to really enjoy her. She's just got a happy spirit, and uh, that's what we need. We need some more uh, positive, happy people. So uh, let's go over there and see Robin at My Life's a Stitch. So we got two two girls that we can go and uh, take a look. Take a look. Um, let's see. Oh, you want to see my whips? <laughs> I never say that. I don't have tons and tons. Okay, I'm making a, a different, we're doing same, doing things differently. Ooh, I got my acorns and thread bag. Ooh, before I forget, I got to go to acorns and threads. Oh my gosh. I got to see Janine and all the girls there and hi Jennifer. And um, 
anyway, they were super nice. Okay, so you had to make an appointment, which we did. Uh, we drive about 165 miles to get there and um, I made an appointment but there really wasn't that much traffic so it was super nice I gave them a call and they kind of adjusted my uh, my appointment time which worked out beautiful for me so that I could go to lunch a little bit earlier afterwards that was good okay so you make an appointment and when you go in there's a place to wash your hand or use that um, antiseptic hand clean hand gel. Um, I can't use that. So I have my own little Ziploc bag with a washcloth with soap and water. And then I just wash my hands off right there. Um, I, I do that other places. I just keep my own little Ziploc bag. Um, okay. So then, and you wear a mask and then I got to go in and you have a 30 minute appointment. It's like a movie star. I'm not kidding you. You go in and they're there to help you and there's no one else in the store. And so it's just like, Ooh, they opened it just for you. It was, it was so nice. But this time I went with a little bit different, um, a little bit different thinking. Okay. You know that book, uh, the millionaire next door, I think it was written, uh, Thomas Stanley early, early 2000s. Anyway. Okay. So the, the idea of his book was, uh, he interviewed different millionaires and how they lived their life and what they did. They clipped coupons. They, they drove old cars. So if you wanted to be a millionaire, you just had to kind of follow along with all of the things they did. And chances are you would become a millionaire. That was, that was the premise of the book. Lots of good ideas and all that. Okay, so during this time, I've been at home with not much shopping and it, trying to get fabric online and thread online. It's been a little, it, it's starting to open up, which is great. But for a bit there, there wasn't much and I wasn't in the, the happiest of moods about my stitching. And, uh, uh, you know, I was stitching that Isabella Johnstone. Oh, that other gal, Robin, she's stitching that. Oh, she's doing a beautiful job. Really lovely fabric. Uh, I'm stitching it and I'm just not happy. I'm not happy with the fabric. I don't, I love the pattern. I, I love stitching. I love the pattern. I just, I don't think I love the, the fabric that I chose. Okay. So Mr. Wright saw me one night and he's like, why are you stitching that if you don't like it? And I said, I don't know. I just put it down. I was frustrated. And then I got to thinking about it. And like that book, uh, the, Na the millionaire next door, if you want to be a millionaire, you got to listen to what millionaires do. I was listening to Laura and Brenda on Brenda and the Serial Starter. Hi, girls. <laughs> and they're always so happy and really genuinely hepped up and excited about their stitching. And I thought, I want what they have. What are they doing that I'm not doing? And you know what? The thing is, they buy fabric. They have, um, they have some supplies at home. They have five or six whips in progress, maybe more. <laughs> uh, Laura has a, a few more than five or six. Uh, but they have different things to choose from. So if they're stuck at home because they're not feeling well or in the times that we're living in and we can't go to a store, they can go to their stash and they can kind of see, hmm, what am I in the mood to stitch? And I really didn't have that. I buy, I, I used to buy fabric, thread, and the pattern, and then I would stitch it. And then when I learned about floss too, uh, I started doing a couple more at a time. But uh, I really wanted to learn what uh, Brenda and Laura were doing. And so I'm nowhere near their league of buying things. But when I went to uh, Acorns and Thread, I had a list and I had a list of fabrics. I had a list of threads. And so when that 30 minute clock started, I would get out of my way, man. <laughs> I was ready to rip. Let's go, potato chip. I was ready. I was ready to go. So I bought all this fabric. I bought thread and I bought extra pieces of fabric to have. And I was there. I got, I could see the colors. I knew the count that I liked. So the last week or so I've started five things. Well, I finished one. It was a smaller thing. It was a little present. Oh, I can't show it. <laughs> it's a surprise for the person, but I'm sure she'll show it once she gets it. Uh, but I have four new starts. So, ooh, in my acorns and thread bag. And I thought I would share. So I didn't put them on a board or anything. I just thought, okay, this one is Merrily, Merrily, We Welcome Spring, Blackbird Design. I did buy that book when I was 
<laughs> acorns and thread. Okay, so I have my threads all ready to go. And I started my project. Okay, here you go. I started, can you see that? I got, I got part, whoops. I was showing you the back, oops. <laughs> like my bloomers, I was showing you the backside. Okay, so here we go. Here we go, that's what I've started. So I've got the main, um, what I did was I got the main border around and then I started with the little vines and the flowers Okay, and so that's all I did. I worked on it for a couple days, and then I'm just putting it away. Okay, so I kept my little card. I'm working on 32 count R and R linen, and it the I started it June 6th. So then I just put it away in my project bag. Isn't that snazzy? <laughs> okay, I put it away in my project bag, and then I started something else. Okay, so the next thing I started, this one is called We Live in Hope, another Blackbird design. Okay, a uh, 32 count French roast. I have my threads, and then I started this one. Okay, let me look at it close. There you go. Okay, so I did the same thing. I started with part of the um the border i got that middle piece look at that middle piece isn't that pretty oh i just love i love those little flowers they're so pretty okay so i stitched on it for a day or two and then i put it away that was the hardest part i don't know how these girls do it but i'm learning okay so then the next one Okay, I don't have all the threads for this one because the place that I ordered didn't have all of them. So, um, okay, so the, hold on. My, my fabric is 32 count cream Belfast linen and I just dipped it in coffee and tea so I could get a little, little bit darker color. And then I have some of the threads, but not all of them. Okay, so this pattern is called Sampler Hill by Brenda Gervais. Oh, it's on the picture crooked. Wait, there you go. Can that help you? It has a bee scap and a couple of dogs and some birds. Me and Mr. Wright. <laughs> I just loved it. I thought it was so pretty. Okay, so I started it. I only I only worked on it last night. So I only got the the little piece in the middle. Can you see that? And the reason I put this, this, the numbers, oops, the reason I put those numbers up there was so that I knew which was top and which was bottom. Because I knew once I stitched that um, little quilt block, um, I wouldn't know which way was up. So I didn't, didn't want to make a mistake. But that's all I got done with that last night. Okay, so I folded it up and I put it away. <laughs> okay, I have another one. <laughs> all right. Okay, this one is called All Joys for Thine. I'm on a Blackbird kick. I, I know. Okay, so this fabric is R, R linen something straw. Oops, I forget the name. Okay, anyway. All right, so here's my threads. And here they are on the fabric. It looks beautiful. Oh, I love them. I really love them. Okay, so... I started stitching it. There you go. Maybe you can see it a little better. Okay, so I got the outside border done. I got the words done. And then I started with the really cool looking bug and some hearts. And then whenever I had extra thread left over from stitching something, I would just stitch one of these little one of these little flowers. I just, you know, they're on the border and I would just use the leftover thread from that length of thread and just you know stitch a flower as I went here and there okay see that green line on the bottom that I stitched yeah I stitched it because I've stitched three things upside down on this piece so I put that green thread there to say this is the bottom orient yourself before you start stitching 
Okay, so I stitched a couple days on this. Then I folded it up and put it away. I get this really pretty bag my friend Barbara made me. She's an excellent seamstress. Okay, so those are my starts. I feel like I'm I feel like really tired and exhausted from explaining it all to you. Okay, so now, now that I have these starts, they're in my project bag right beside my stitching chair. And then I just get to decide which one I want to work on. So if I want to just stick with one, which is my comfort zone, and you know I want to do that, I can. Or if it's just not talking to me that day, then I can switch to something else. And I have a couple pieces of fabric that I have available that have no pattern connected to them. I just have extra fabric so that I have something in case I want to start something a pattern that I have or and I can't go to the store or something so anyway I know that's pretty exciting for me <laughs> so thank you Brenda and Laura Mwah! thank you for your suggestion thank you for being so cheerful and upbeat and um, Brenda always says stitch what you love that's that's gonna be the title of her book stitch what you love so uh, thanks for reminding me. Thanks for taking a slipper upside my head to remind me to uh, stitch the things that I love. I love the Isabel Johnson pattern. I love the threads. I don't care for the fabric. So I'm going to set it aside. Uh, I'm going to cut out the little flower that I did and maybe make a pin pillow or the top of a drum or something. Um, but I'm going to pick different fabric and uh, give it another try. So uh, thanks for the suggestion, girls. Uh, you really, really are uplifting, and I appreciate everything that you share. Um, it inspires me. It gets me going, so I really love it. Thanks. Hey, let's do a giveaway. Um, I have this great giveaway. Look at this. It's a, it's a Christmas project bag. Look at the red carton on there. You want to see the front of it? <laughs> I did this plaid fabric. It's really fun. Okay, and then there's a couple little buttons hanging there. So, oh, I have a little a little hook there for your, your threads and some tea and the uh, um, library cards so you can keep track of your projects. So I thought uh, there's lots of people doing Jolly July where they stitch some Christmas projects. So I thought, oh, I should give away a project bag. Okay, you want to know what you need to what you need to write down? <laughs> Okay, so my question is, okay, now I'm reading them everywhere. Um, I love reading them. I love Karen. From, uh, Karen's blog is, um, it, it's not that hard. Or it, I'll link her below. She's really funny. Um, anyway, the question is, do you use magnetic eyelashes? Have you ever used them? Have you bought them? Did you spend way too much money? Did you spend over $100? Did you spend $30? I kind of want to do it. I know I just sit around the house or I garden or what have you, but ooh, I kind of think that it might look great. I might want to try it. So I need to hear some reviews. So has anybody out there, hello, hello, anybody out there tried magnetic eyelashes? And sometimes they're called magnetic eyelashes eyeliner because I think it's like enough magnetic that it looks like eyeliner. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I need them. I think I just want them. Okay, I think I do. But I kind of want to hear maybe some reviews or maybe some, you know, a, a brand name that you like or maybe a mishap. I don't know. It could be funny. I'm not sure. Anyway, okay. I'm giving away the project bag and I think I'm going to wait like about a week. So after about a week, I'm going to draw the name and then I'm just going to mail it out so the person could have it for July because I don't think I'm going to do a um, I won't I won't do a um, video in in another week I don't think you need to hear me yak for another <laughs> I don't know how long oh I've been talking for 30 minutes okay okay <laughs> anyway a Christmas a Christmas project bag I thought you might like it and the question is have you ever used magnetic eyelashes and if you have please share share your views we want to learn we want to learn all about it Okay, let's see. What I want to talk about what we're grateful for. What am I grateful for? I am grateful for, I got this book. I got this book called The Art of Stone Painting. So I'm learning. I'm making, I'm, I'm trying it again. I made this rock. I just painted it purple. 
So I've been doing um, streaking with the cool kids. So I walk a mile every day in June and then every day I put a rock in my pocket and then I leave it on my walk somewhere so that somebody else could find it. So um, I just love that I got this book. It had so many really cool ideas. Look, they made, they made um, a frog and they made a ladybug and they have all these great ideas and so some days I can just sit out on the patio and just do something for fun. You can paint these. It's just so fun. It's just so goofy. And, and you can just write really cool messages like, like I did. Oh, there you go. Yay. It's all about love, isn't it? Kindness, be kind, love. Anyway. I love, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I found that fun book. It's really neat. And it's kind of fun. I, Mr. Wright sat down with me and started painting a rock. I was like, really? Okay. Uh, what else am I grateful for? Ooh, toenail polish. Ooh, I have a watermelon color on. It's so pretty. Ooh, my garden. My garden's doing great. Ooh, let's see. Okay, one tomato plant bit the dust, had to go. And then I replanted, or I planted, transplanted a cucumber plant there. Uh, but everything's coming up great. It's looking wonderful. My sunflowers are 17 inches tall. Ooh, that makes me so happy. So anyway, my garden's doing great. I got a garden tip for you. You want to hear your garden tip? Okay. This is sewing elastic. It's an eighth of an inch wide. Oh, I don't think it says. I think it's an eighth of an inch wide. I got it on Amazon about $8. And some folks might have some leftover from making masks and things. But anyway, you can just order eight bucks. So you take about eight or nine inches, cut it, and tie your tomato plants up with it. Because it still has enough give that the plant can still move a little bit and won't get harmed. And it's super easy. It's like eight dollars for a hundred yards or whatever that is. And so cheap, easy easy to tie up. It takes about 20 seconds to tie it up onto your tomato plant to um, help it stay upright and not bend or break. Or That's my garden tip. It's a good one. I love it. I love it. Oh, another garden tip. I have been trying to keep the flies away from my um, my spinach and my Swiss chard. You know those white flies, they, they uh, lay eggs, which then turns into those beet leaf miners and they eat your leaves. And I've tried every little trick, natural, blah, 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 all the different things, and they don't work. You know what worked this year? A pinwheel. A little children's pinwheel. I just stuck it in the ground, and it moves around enough that it keeps the flies away. I haven't had any problems. It's so fun. It's like a really happy solution. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, what else am I grateful for? Oh, you know what? I'm grateful that we have a hidden key somewhere in our garden shed, which... By the way, it took me like 25 minutes to remember where the key was hidden, but you probably understand why I'm grateful for that. I don't know how I did it, but I locked the back door as I was outside gardening, and then when I went in to try to go inside, the door was locked. And it kind of took my breath away for a second. I was like, oh what am I going to do? And then I was like, oh yeah, we put a key there four years ago when we moved here. And then I had to look through the whole shed to remember where did we keep that key so it was well hidden <laughs> so I'm grateful there was a key hidden in the garden shed <laughs> oh one more thing I'm grateful for I woke up to a beautiful bouquet of flowers on the uh, kitchen tables so Mr. Wright he's a good one he's a good guy I am I am so grateful for that but uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm grateful for all of you and your kind comments, your uplifting comments. Um, some of the days can get a little, um, my, my spirit can take a little dip, a little dip. There's only so much baking and cooking and stitching and gardening that you can do. And so, uh, sit down with a nice cup of coffee and, uh, read some of your comments and really genuinely kind and considerate and so thoughtful. So, um, I just wanted to say a special thank you. Thank you for taking the time to uh, lift my spirits. And I really appreciate you being out there. Um, finishing projects at 1 o'clock in the morning and you don't really have anyone to tell. So it's kind of fun to to share my finishes and my, my happy times. Like, look, look what I made. And you you get it. So I appreciate that. I really do. 
Um, thanks a lot for joining me, and I'll be back in a couple weeks, but I'll do that drawing for that uh, Christmas project bag in about a week. So if, if you have an idea for some magnetic eyelashes, I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, send me your addresses if you were one of the winner, and I promise I'll send out uh, those uh, projects bags and, and things this, this Monday. Mr. Wright will uh, go to the post office for us, so... Anyway, thanks a lot. Get out there and get some sunshine. Maybe you can sit in your backyard and have a glass of iced tea and just enjoy yourself. Don't forget to be kind. Keep being kind. This is a great community. I don't need to remind you. You're all really, really kind. So uh, thanks so much. We'll chat soon. Bye-bye.